Hello and welcome back to the Scale Modelling Cafe. My name is Jamie and welcome to the introductory video of the next project which is going to be this which is the Edward 172nd scale Z37A Bumblebee which is the English translation of that word there which uh, I'm not going to attempt to pronounce. Um, and yeah, it looks a lovely little kit in the box. So what I'm going to do is <clears throat> I'll just describe the sort of contents of the box. It's not a review. Um, maybe a sort of sprue tour would be a more accurate description. Some of the aftermarket products that I've got for this, and I do have a few, which is my kind of usual MO. And then some um, of my ideas for the project. And that sort of, I think, I think most of us will have a sort of, if we close our eyes, we have we can imagine what the project's gonna sort of look like at the end. So I'll try, if I can, to put that into words. So let's have a look in the box then. I wonder if that's gonna hold up. I'll just, there we go, that'll do, fantastic. Um, <clears throat> so standard Edward kind of um, instruction booklet. Uh, clearly I've had a little bit of a, um, a whiz through this and it looks, Fairly simple in construction. Um, however, sort of the last bits, there's quite a few lots of little detail fiddly whatnots to go on the end. So um, I think I can sort of already anticipate that sort of last 10% of a project taking 50% of the time kind of kind of deal. Um, you know, clearly numbers disclaimer, numbers not accurate, but you get the concept. So yeah, it looks really cool. And then in the back, lots of sort of colour schemes and more of that in a moment. So let's bung that down there. <clears throat> right, the plastic itself, uh, small, clear um, thing, windscreen, two sort of bulged side panels for the doors and then two little windows. So quite simple, um, but quite nice. Excuse me, I'll just take a sip of my lemon water. <clears throat> Got a bit of a chesty cough today. Uh, right, let's start off with the wings actually. So um, you just get two grey sprues. And I say sprues, I know the technical term is is runners and strictly speaking we should say runners I guess. However, pretty much everybody says sprue so I'm gonna say sprue. Um, sorry, apologies to the purists out there. Now, um, here we go. So um, as you can see, quite a small aeroplane, quite a high aspect ratio wing, as you can see uh, with the bottom, the one piece bottom and then you get two piece um, uppers and then all this other gubbins <clears throat> round here is, uh, these are the mounts for the split flaps, uh, quite big flaps on this. So I imagine it's got some, um, a very good stall capability just looking at this. Um, there's the rudder, which is a bit wobbly on there. It's about to fall off, I think. So I've got to take care with that to make sure I don't lose it. But the surface detail is absolutely amazing. It's got, um, if you can hear, that's the corrugations on the wing, which you can really see nicely on the box art. So beautiful raised surface detail there, but also beautifully fine recessed rivets, which look lovely. And it's gonna take a real careful painting job um, with this. I'm gonna be very careful with primer. Um, I'm going to try and avoid using primer if I can, but we shall see how we get on. Depends how it goes together. I'm anticipating it goes together very well. Um, so that's the wing sprue. And then <clears throat> the sort of fuselage sprue or others sprue. The, again, the detail is lovely. The engine is beautiful, but it gets hidden behind this kind of, um, this shutter arrangement. So. Um, if you're familiar with the Antonov 2 or the Yak 52, Yak 50, that kind of that kind of um, arrangement, similar in here, and that's going to be a real shame to cover up that engine. But I don't know what to do yet <coughs> with that. Um, and then yeah, the rest of it is you know fairly simple cockpit, but then it looks like a fairly simple aeroplane. Uh, <coughs> I'm going to call these drop tanks. They're they're, they're clearly not drop tanks. They're the, the, the tanks for the agricultural stuff that, uh, that gets sprayed around, um, around the fields. Uh, and then lots of sort of fiddly bits 
as I mentioned at the end, to, to go in. Um, nice sort of two-bladed propeller, um, quite a bland seat, but again, it's probably quite bland anyway. So yeah, there we go. That is that. Is that. And as you can see, um, if I put my hand behind it, behind the fuselage, it is, it is quite a small little thing. So um, this would be quite fun to do in 48th, um, if Edward were going to do that. But there we go. So that's that's the sort of plastic. I'll put that over there. And now for the other bit. So this is the profit pack version. So you do get uh, canopy masks, but you also get the wheel masks and some masks for some of the sort of cheap lines and uh, and coloured areas on some of the schemes. So that's a really nice touch. So thank you, Edward, for that. Um, a photo etch set which looks quite big however it, it's kind of deceptive because there's five different instrument panels and five different um, sort of console arrangements in there different colors gray turquoise the aquamarine greeny color um, sort of a bluey one a gray so um, a lot of that is is filled up with that there is a set of harnesses and then there's sort of this sort of third maybe um, is kind of smaller details so that's the photo etch however what I've got and bought so here's the first of the aftermarket is I bought Edward's space set now this has some photo etch details including the harness but also that 3d resin decal printed thing for the instruments so it's like effectively it's analogous to sort of color photo etch but it's in 3d and I can feel the relief through the packet I've used it once before on the um, on the previous video, the F14 from Academy. Um, <clears throat> but the difference here is, is you only get two options in colours. You get that sort of turquoisey green colour, but you get a sort of creamy beige colour, which doesn't really match the colour photo etch colour. The, that sort of colour here is a real sort of pay, pale bluey purpley gray tone whereas this is a very warm creamy beigey tone so yeah i'm not entirely sure what i'm going to do with that i don't know yet um i've not decided which scheme i'm going to do but looking forward to to trying those out um we shall see on that right the other thing oh hang on what i didn't mention about the kit was the deco sheet, which looks really nice. Now, um, these are the new, in inverted commas, recent, depends on when you're watching the video, I suppose, um, <clears throat> decals. So these are the decals that, a happy accident, I suppose you could call it, where you can remove the carrier film to leave the image behind on the model. Various ways of doing it, carefully picking it with tweezers and peeling it off, or gently lifting up uh, the carrier film with some tape or using some white spirit or mineral spirits maybe with a cotton bud um, or q-tip to just gently rub and dissolve and it turns into like a gum and then you can just kind of wipe it away to leave the image now I've not used these before um, I've seen various people um, uh, on YouTube use them uh, I've chatted to one or two of my friends that have that have tried it there are some side effects, I suppose you could call it, where um, it, it's affecting the image underneath. So the peeling method, actually peeling up the image with it because um, it's not stuck, stuck down properly or rubbing it with, a, with the white spirit and a cotton bud and actually kind of rubbing some of the image away. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try, try some different methods of removing the carrier film. I've used HGW, HGW decals many times, love them to bits. I think, um, you know, we throw away the term game changer around loosely at times, but I think the HGW decal system is a game changer, like the 3D printed decal instrument thing. So, um, yeah, it's gonna be interesting um, when I come to use it. Now I'm gonna try both or different methods of removing the carrier film and also just sort of spraying varnish over the top like a traditional sort of decal and see how that works out. So that's going to be interesting. Um, 
And interesting as well on here is you do get all the different colors for the instruments as well. So the sort of the, the, the greeny color, the, the bluey color, the gray color. And again, none of these match the space sort of warm, creamy color. So mm, yeah, interesting. Uh, right, what else is in here? Edward Brassin wheel set. Um, I don't know whether, uh, I've got a feeling that some of these may be printed, some of these may be cast, I really don't know. Interesting, three different colours. So, um, main wheels in a mid-grey, tail wheel in white, which is unusual, and then some of the mudguards and stuff in the in a dark grey. Um, and, uh, oh, I can feel one of the wheels at the top. I thought one was missing. I'll get that out later. Um, and a little bit of photo etch as well, just to enhance things there. So, um, yeah, that looks that looks really good. Um, and that wasn't too expensive. And then the last bit I've got is the spraying boom set. Which is really interesting because um, the kit, so the big sort of drum thing, under, that's the international symbol for a drum thing that um, goes under the middle of the fuselage, that um, is highly detailed, way more detailed than the kit piece. Um, and then you get the spray booms, which to me look 3D printed. Um, just looking at the scaffolding, I'll see if I can insert the picture. Um, uh, and looks exceptionally fragile, but actually if I, I can just move it and there is quite a bit of flexibility to that resin, which has no doubt protected it from, from damage. So yeah, it looks like a bit of a complicated cleanup job, but it's so fine, that detail for those spray booms, that looks brilliant. But I've got a bit of a dilemma. And that dilemma is, the two schemes that sort of really jump out at me, that, that really appeal, don't have any of the spray kit on them. So the first is this Hungarian one, with uh, yellow wings, white fuselage, grey top fuselage it looks like, um, and black centre fuselage on the underside. This was a glider tug and had all that kit removed. So, uh, yeah, what to do? The other one that jumps out is this orange Russian job here. Uh, again, which had the stuff... Um, looked like it had the stuff removed. Um, it said, so it was built in 1970, registered in Russia in 2014 with an unknown serial, um, purchased probably in re Ukraine, but is overhauled in Toljati, which I'm assuming is in Ukraine. Uh, it's got Ukrainian registration on it. Um, it's got a Yak-12 propeller and equipped with MI4 wheels. So I don't know whether the wheels in the kit or the um, aftermarket set are applicable or whether they've all got MI4 wheels anyway, and that's just standard. It just happens to be mentioned in that one. I don't really know. But this one says it was put up for sale in 2020. So one, what plan I've got for this is I want to do a derelict aeroplane. Um, and I've not done a derelict colourful aeroplane. I've done, um, my first one I did was a, a Hobby Boss A7 Corsair in 72nd. That was a, a practice, if you like. And actually, I was really pleased how that came out. Um, I stripped and repainted a Tamiya Gecko as a derelict one. See, that was camouflage green. And I've done a few other derelict ones, including a 148 scale Airfix Nat, which was red and white. So, but I quite fancy doing a sort of derelict colourful one. Now, the other yellow schemes here, unfortunately, don't appeal. Most of those have the, the spray gubbins on. This orangey one at the front with the shark's mouth, like the Hellcat, um, doesn't have it. it. And it's the box art one, and the box, but the box art's yellow. And this is like a light orange. Um, so that's a bit confusing. The other one is the Indian one, but that's just white and red. And I've kind of done that on the on the net, so that one doesn't appeal. So I think what I may do is I may do the uh, the orange the orange one 
um, or the Hungarian one and assume that they've been bought, modified, and now they're direct. So it's a bit of a what if, which is not entirely satisfactory. However, that's the kind of way I'm leaning because I don't really want to do another one of these even though it looks absolutely amazing and lovely. Um, I tend not to do that, build sort of multiples of the same thing. So I'm reluctant to buy another kit to do a different scheme to use the this resin stuff. So, oh, I don't really know what to do. Um, yeah, I, I might do this orange one on, or, or that one with the stuff on and do as a bit of what if, I don't know. I, we will cross that bridge when we get to it, as we say, in the UK. So, um, there we go. That's my kind of concept and a bit of a sort of walkthrough of this, what looks to be a lovely kit, the Edward 172nd scale Z37A Bumblebee. And um, I'll see you on the next video when uh, I start painting up the cockpit, as soon as I decide what color I'm gonna paint the cockpit in. Okay, so um, thanks very much for tuning in and I'll see you on the next one. Cheers.